remove the wheel. Take the wheel off. I'm going to take these two caliper bracket bolts out. I don't have to take the caliper off the bracket. We'll just take those two out. Use a 17 millimeter socket. Then we can grab the caliper and just slide it off the rotor. Let me use a caliper hanger. Find somewhere to grab onto the caliper and just hook it up onto the coil spring. Let it hang, make sure there's not too much tension on the hose, on the brake hose. Before I pull the rotor off, I'm just gonna mark where the rotor was when I took it off, just in case there's some variances in the hub or the rotor. Take that off. Now I wanna take the wheel speed sensor off. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. Move that bolt, and grab the wheel speed sensor, twist it a little bit, and pull it up. And we'll just set that aside. I'm taking these two bolts out. These hold the knuckle to this bracket right here that goes to the tie rod and the ball joint. You could take off the ball joint and the tie rod, but it's easier to just take these two bolts out. I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter socket. I'm gonna take this cotter pin off right here. I'll just use a pair of pliers. You could use some needle nose pliers. I'll save that. Before I take this nut off, I'm just gonna spray it with a little rust penetrant. It's a little bit rusty. Now I'm not gonna take this nut off completely. I wanna separate the upper ball joint from the knuckle. I'm gonna use a tool like this to separate the ball joint. And it popped. Separate that and pull the knuckle right off. On the back side, we wanna take this cap off. Just use a straight blade screwdriver and a hammer. Give it a tap. to get under the lip and take that off. Now before we take this axle nut off, um, it's peened over a little bit to prevent it from loosening up. Just going to take a punch and a hammer and that looks pretty good. There's a little bit in there but that's okay. With the impact gun, I'll be able to get that nut right off. Use a 36 millimeter socket. Take it off. Now I'm going to take a magnet, I can grab this reluctor wheel, you can just sh shake it a little bit. If you had two magnets, it would be ideal. And here it comes. And take that out. Alright, so you want to get creative with setting this up into some kind of a press. Um, you want to support the knuckle and we're going to push the hub straight through. It's moving. Just putting a pry bar underneath just to grab the hub so it doesn't fall and hit the ground or anything. I don't want to put my fingers in there because I don't want to uh, cause any harm to myself. There we go. Popped off. And there's the hub. Right, There's a seal right here. Just use a pry bar. Just get underneath the seal. Pull the seal up. It's a good idea to replace this seal. Obviously ours is completely destroyed. Could always try cutting it. You just got to be careful. And there we go. Pull it off. There's a snap ring right here. You're going to need some large snap ring pliers. Let me get in there and there. And pull that out, there you go. It's a good idea to replace this, but if you have to reuse it, you can. All right, now we're gonna use a couple adapters and press the bearing straight through.
And there's the bearing race. All the balls had come out of it earlier. So we need to get this race off this hub so that we can reuse it. Um, it's not coming off. We don't have anything to grab underneath here and press it out with. So we're going to have to cut it off. Um, what I'm going to do is put a little slice in it and then I'll take the air hammer and try to air hammer it off. Um, what you could do is try to make a slice like so you have an edge so then you can try to grab it but we'll see what we can do. And I didn't score the hub at all which is nice but even if you scored it a little bit it's going to be okay. Just take this seal off we'll just clean this up a little bit and we can reinstall it. Right. There's a little bit of a rust ridge around here. Take um, some type of a wire brush and just clean it up. Or you can use a little bit of sandpaper or emery cloth. All right, that looks good. Make sure everything's cleaned out. All right, now we want to try to set this up and take the new bearing, line the bearing up. Good. Now we're going to press this in. If you want to, before you go to press this in, you could actually take a little bit of lubrication and put it on the bearing. Um, that might help push it in a little bit. It's not necessary, but it might help. All right, that's all the way down. Double check on the back side, just make sure it's all the way down, all the way around, which it looks good. Now I've got a new snap ring, and I'm going to install this. Make sure that's all installed properly. Make sure it goes in all the way around. Ours looks good. Now we're going to install this seal. Just line that up. And actually, if I use the race of the old bearing, it fits perfectly on that seal. Just put a block of metal, or you could use a block of wood and tap it in. Just make sure it's lined up properly. Perfect. When I go to press the hub in there, I left that plastic protector in there, um, that's not going to harm anything, it's just the hub's going to push it through there. And then on the back side, I'm going to put a socket that's big enough so that the hub can go through there. And then I want to set that there so that when it presses through, it doesn't push the center of the bearing out. So it's going to be resting right on that. You can use a little bit of uh, grease also on this, that'll help out a little bit. That's all the way down. Now this piece came off when we pressed that through. It's all the way in. Make sure it spins. That's good. Let's go put that other piece on the back. Take this reluctor ring, install that plate, make sure it's on there properly. That looks good. You can make sure it spins with the hub. It's all the way down. Take the nut. Reinstall the nut. So now I need to prevent the hub from spinning. So I'm going to take a pry bar, go in between the lugs, lug studs. I'm going to take a 36 millimeter socket. And I want to torque this while I hold the hub. And torque this to 147 foot pounds. You could always try to put this in a vise if you struggle by doing this yourself or have a partner hold it. There we go. Now I'm going to take a punch and a hammer. We're going to hammer this lock back down. 
That's good. It's not going to loosen up. Now I'm going to take this dust cap, line that back up. Just take a block of wood, hammer, give it a tap. Just make sure it's all the way on. That looks good. Perfect. All right, take the knuckle. We're ready to reinstall it on the vehicle. Line up that lower ball joint bracket. Take the two bolts, get those started. Now I'm going to torque those two bolts to 83 foot pounds. Now install the upper ball joint. Get that lined up. Take the castle nut, install the castle nut. I'm going to tighten this nut to 64 foot pounds. And take the cotter pin and line that up. That's good. Install the wheel speed sensor. Get that lined up. Push that in. And put the bolts back in. And I'll just tighten that down. And just snug it up. Good, not too tight. And put the rotor back on. Just line it up with the stud that I took it off with. You could take a lug nut fit, so it can hold the rotor on for you while you put the brake caliper on. Now I'll take the caliper off, take the hanger off, line the caliper up on the rotor, slide it in position, take the caliper bolts, install those on the back. Now we torque those bolts to 87 foot-pounds. You can take that lug nut off. Install the wheel. Now I'm going to torque these wheels to 76 foot-pounds. I'm going to do that in a star pattern. Make sure the wheel gets tightened down evenly. And just go around again to double check. That's good. It's always a good idea afterwards just to pump the brake pedal. There may be a little bit of an air gap between the caliper and the brake pads. And it's good.